the Application Life Cycle Risk Management Podcast, Episode 32, Value Types versus Reference Types. It's amazing to me how few programmers understand the fundamentals of how variables work. Not just in .NET or C-Sharp specifically, but in every language they work in. It amazes me for two reasons. First, I don't think I could program if I didn't understand what was physically happening as a result of the code I was writing. Not knowing how the variables relate to the memory that they use would be, to me, a major limitation. But it also amazes me because I don't think anyone can program intelligently until they do know what is happening. So I'll start from the outside and move in to what's happening in memory. The first question we need to quantify is, what types in .NET are referred to as value types? So, common value types are the integer, double, float, decimal, and boolean, what we typically refer to as primitives. But there are other types that are also value types. Enums, structs, date time because it's a struct, are also value types. Reference types are any type in .NET that derive from a class and require the new keyword in order to have an instance of a variable of that type. Why didn't I just say any type that derives from a class? Well, the fact of the matter is that every type in .NET derives from a class. The topmost class is object. All of the value types derive from a subclass of object named system.valueType. But it is what happens in memory when we use these variable types that is of interest to us. When you declare a variable that is a value type and then assign a value to it, the memory that variable occupies holds the value you assigned to it. The variable is just a representation of the actual value. Contrast this to a reference type. When you new up or instantiate a variable, that is a reference type, the first thing that is happening is that memory is being allocated to hold the variables in the class and then memory is being set aside to hold a pointer to that memory we just allocated. So with a reference type, we are only pointing to the memory we are actually using. With a value type, the variable is the value we are using. This has implications to how the memory is used when we do assignments. For example, integer a equals 1, integer b equals 2, a equals b. Now when we assign b to a, we're copying the value occupied by b into the memory location occupied by a. But what happens when we do the same thing with the reference type? Given a person class with a name and an age, Var Joe equals new person, Joe.name equals Joe, Joe.age equals 23. Var Alice equals new person, Alice.name equals Alice, Alice.age equals 33. Now, Joe equals Alice. We're assigning Alice to Joe. Joe.age equals 50. What will be the value of Alice.age? You should say 50 because once we assign Alice to Joe, Alice and Joe point to the same person object, and the person object that Alice pointed to is no longer available. But what happens if we make person a struct? So struct person with a name and an age. Person Joe. Joe.name equals Joe. Joe.age equals 23. Person Alice. Alice.name equals Alice. Alice.age equals 33. Joe equals Alice assigning Alice to Joe, Joe.age equals 50. Now what is the value of Alice.age? In this case, you should say that Alice is still 33 because when we assigned Alice to Joe, Joe got a copy of everything that Alice had. So Joe's name is Alice. And before we assign 50 to Joe.age, Joe.age holds the value of 33. But the assignment has no impact on the value of alice.age. Now, no description of value types and reference types would be complete without some discussion of stacks and heaps. 
The stack is the location in memory that holds the value types and reference pointers. Remember I said that variables point to the memory being occupied by the value in your method. So when you declare a variable inside of a method, that memory gets pushed onto the stack. And when you pass a variable to another method, that variable gets copied into a temporary variable and placed on the stack. So doing something like void foo int i equals 23 foo2 23 where we're calling another method called foo2 with 23 and then foo2 has uh, something that we're going to do with it. That will copy the variable 23 into foo2. So foo2 will not end up with the same reference that's in i. So if we change the value of f, that's the parameter we passed into foo2, to 32, what do you think the value of i will be when we get back to foo? Because it's a copy, it will still be 23. The heap, on the other hand, is a location in memory that is outside the scope of the methods we create. So the only thing being passed around in our functions that use reference variables is pointers. But because they are pointers, anything we do to a reference object inside of a method will be reflected in the variable located inside of the method that called it. So foo var p equals new person, p.80 equals 24, foo2 pass in p, foo2 person, person.age equals 44. So when foo2 returns, p.age will actually be 44. However, if we change what person is pointing to, that is foo2 person, p, uh, person parameter person equals new person person dot age equals 44, p would remain unchanged in the calling function because we're now pointing at a new uh, object. So the final question that you should be asking at this point is, when I declare a value type as a member variable of my class, as I've done with the age variable in person above, where is the age variable located? On the stack or on the heap? And the answer to that would be it's located in the heap because it is a member of a class that is located in the heap. And if we create another person object inside of person, the pointer would also be located in the heap and would point to another location on the heap. Don't forget to rate this show in iTunes and Stitcher. What's Stitcher? Stitcher is an award-winning free app that lets you listen to all your favorite shows, plus discover from 20,000 news, entertainment, and sports shows. Create custom playlists. Available on the iOS, Android, and Nook. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at stitcher.com or in the App Store. And for the links to items mentioned in this podcast, make sure you check out my blog at blog.dmbcllc.com. A link to this article is in the show description.